The DevExpress treeless control is a powerful way of representing tabular information in a hierarchical fashion, but sometimes you just want to display and work with a single column tree that looks and behaves like a standard tree control, yet benefits from all the advanced features included in the DevExpress tree list. In this video, I'll show you how you can programmatically build a tree of nodes using the tree list control, then alter its appearance and behavior with no added visual distractions. The tree I'll create will contain three top-level nodes called code, documents, and videos. It will also contain some child nodes under each one. Let's start by identifying the tree list control in the control toolbox in Visual Studio. I'll drag this control onto a Windows form and leave the default name of the tree list one. Let's ensure the control fits somewhere in the form and doesn't spill out over the edges. The tree list control will need at least one column in which to display information. We can manage this from the Property Editor Designer window. I can right click on the control and select the Run Designer option. You can see on the left of this dialog some icon groupings. I'll click on the Columns icon and the Column Designer will appear on the right. Now I'll click on the Add button across the top and a column item called Tree List Column 1 will appear in the list. In the property browser to the right, I'll change the name property to a value that makes more sense and follows a good naming standard. I'll also change the field name property to a value that I'll use later to get and set node values. I can now close the property editor dialog. The code we'll need to write will easily go into the load event of the form. So I'll double click on the form to get that event method coded for me. Every node that will appear in the tree will be represented by a type called tree list node, which is in the devexpress.extratreelist.nodes namespace. I'll start by adding using statements to import this namespace as well as the namespace above it. To programmatically add nodes to the tree, I'll need to create some objects of type tree list node. These objects are created and added to the tree in one step using the append node method of the tree list control. This method has several overloads, but the one that's important to me here is the one with two arguments, object data and parent node. The append node method will create and return a tree list node object and automatically add the object to the tree's list of nodes. To keep things simple, I can send null values into both these arguments. I'll explain why in just a second. Notice I'm calling my newly created node code node. The first null value can be used to pre-initialize the node with data, but I'll take care of that through more descriptive means. The second null value indicates that this newly created node will be added to the tree at the root level. If this node were to be a child of an existing node, as others will be in a couple of minutes, I would have had to identify that existing node and send it into this argument. In order to set the text value that the node will display in the tree, I'll use the setValue method of my newly created tree list node object. The first of the two arguments in this method is the column ID, which corresponds to the field name property I changed earlier using the property editor dialog. If you recall, I changed that value to the word name. The second argument is the text that will display in this node. Now I'll repeat the process for two more nodes. Let's run the project and see the results so far. To continue building the other nodes, I'll use the same technique, but this time I'll be sending a parent node into the second argument of the append node method instead of a null value. Notice that to keep the code simple, I'm going to reuse the same variable for all my child nodes. You can, of course, continue this process to build any hierarchical representation you desire. You can also data bind the tree to a variety of data sources. If I run the project now, I should see a more complete tree. By default, the tree list control is configured to display column headers and row indicators. This gives it a grid-like appearance, which is what I want to change. To make the tree list look like a conventional tree control, I'll access the Options View property in the Property Browser. As you can see, 
Options view is a complex property, which when expanded reveals several sub-properties. There are three properties here whose value I want to change to false. The first is the show columns property. This will prevent the column headers from displaying. Now I'll change the show indicator property to false in order to hide the row indicator bar to the left of the tree. Lastly, changing the show horizontal lines property to false will eliminate the horizontal lines that separate each row in the tree. Running my project will now display a tree that does not have that grid-like appearance and feel. If I click on a node, you'll see that its value can be edited. To eliminate this behavior, I'll change the editable property under the options behavior property to false. Now if I run the project, you'll see that you can no longer edit the nodes in the tree itself. As you can see, the tree list control now resembles a very conventional single column tree view. The last characteristic I want to change is the visual effect you get when you click on a node. As you can see, the default effect is a framed outline around the selected node that extends the entire width of the tree. I want to display the focused node in a simple highlighting fashion. To do this, I have to tap into the tree's custom draw node cell event. This event fires during the drawing of each node and allows you to control how that node is drawn with greater detail. Let's tap into that event and add the custom code necessary. The first thing this code needs to do is check to see if the node being drawn is the focused node. If so, it will first fill the current bounds of the node with a standard window brush. Next, it'll create a rectangle object with the same height of that of the current node, but with a width of one pixel greater than the contained text. This, as opposed to the width of the entire tree. We can then use the new rectangle object to fill the rectangular section of this node using a brush of type highlight. Lastly, the node's text is redrawn using a highlight text brush and in the dimensions of the created rectangle object. And by telling this event that we have handled the drawing ourselves, we ensure that the custom drawing code is the one that will be used by the tree and not the default implementation. If I run the project now, you'll see that selecting a node in the tree will simply focus it using conventional highlighted text. Our modifications to the tree list control are complete. With very little work, you can create your own control that inherits from the DevExpress tree list control and encapsulates these modifications for more reusability. You've now seen how you can use the DevExpress tree list control for Windows Forms to build more conventional and simple looking tree views. Using this technique, you can continue to standardize the DevExpress Experience Suite for all your tree view needs and benefit from characteristics shared by all controls in our suite, such as look and feel and other shared APIs. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.